having the trouble for organising this event for me <coughs> and for the Institute of Positive Research and Development. Um, I'm also going to kind of beg your forgiveness because in, in, in my uh, chair's introduction, he mentioned that we'd be focusing a lot on issues pertaining to the global social justice movement. And in the course of actually preparing, um, there is a preponderance of doom and gloom and looking at what's going wrong with the world. And only a little bit at the end talking about the positive things that we can do. But hopefully in the Q&A session we'll be having an opportunity to talk about that. <clears throat> so I'm going to start by kind of focusing on the title that we've got. The idea of the Holocaust, which as we all know, is traditionally used to refer to the systematic, bureaucratic, state-sponsored persecution and mass murder of the Jews by Nazi Germany during the Second World War. And as you can see, the word Holocaust is originally a Greek word, which means sacrifice by fire. It conveys an event, the scale and horror of which transformed the course of world history, as we're all aware. Moreover, it's often seen as a crime against humanity, that is unparalleled and unique. This, none of us dispute. The Nazi Holocaust was indeed a uniquely horrific genocide, whose enormity and systematic character is barely imaginable. In this context, you might want to know, what do I mean when I talk about the hidden Holocaust? That's the title of today's event. But I'm not using the term in a strict academic sense at the moment. I'm trying to use it to convey the sense of what's going on today, and what's been going on in our history. What you might kind of see is a campaign of global homicide, whose scale and enormity is very, very difficult to convey in words. <coughs> I also use the term hidden holocaust specifically to convey the idea that this campaign is actually hidden from our perceptions. It's something that is not very easy to see. It's less visible. It's something that if you want to understand it, you need to scratch the surface of what's going on, not just today, but also historically. Its reality, though, is very real. Very real for millions of people around the world, both historically and today. But it remains officially unacknowledged. I'm going to focus on the 20th and 21st centuries in terms of talking about how this hidden historical holocaust is now escalating into a global holocaust, even as we speak. I'm going to talk about expert projections from different disciplines in the social sciences and physical sciences on the, the really, really worrying trends that are going on now, which may even culminate, according to some of the most prominent experts, culminate in the extinction of our species, and perhaps even all life on Earth. And this is where we get to the second part of my title, Our Civilizational Crisis. That picture's real, by the way. No, I'm just kidding, it's not. It's, it's a fake picture. <laughs> it's not. Um, so we often, we often, civilization is a word that's kind of bandied about a lot. Um, and it's often used to explain the dynamics of the war on terror. And I've got a quote here from Tony Blair earlier this year where he's used the term. And um, actually his, his use of the term came from um, an academic theory of international relations. You've probably heard of it, the Clash of Civilizations thesis that was originally put forward by Samuel Huntington, who was a Harvard professor and a government advisor, who said that you know, the war on terror is basically an, an almost inevitable clash between these two civilizational camps, you know, Islam and West. And what Tony Blair has done is really kind of just amended this a little bit, um, but really kind of solidified the meaning to say that it's not just a case of you've got these two civilizations on an equal playing field now kind of kind of, you know, inevitably confronting, is that one of these civilizations represents this reactionary, semi-feudal, backward existence, whereas our civilization represents progress, modernity. But my argument today is that this hidden holocaust that I'm talking about is not an aberration from our advanced civilization that represents, you know, like the peak of human development. On the contrary, I'm arguing that this hidden holocaust is integral to the very structure of the values and activities of this civilization as we currently stand. And unless we attempt to transform the nature of this civilization,
civilization. We may well perish in the holocaust of our own nation.